We thank our presenting sponsor, Bank of America, for its continued partnership with the Suffolk County Vanderbilt Museum. Bank of America is a major supporter of more than 2,000 cultural organizations across the country and is committed to supporting local partners like the Vanderbilt to ensure that neighborhoods remain strong and vibrant. Bank of America's support allows us to bring these intriguing pieces of Vanderbilt family history to you and your family in the comfort of your home through Moments in History. Not many people know this, but about 120 years ago, Long Island was the center of one of the largest automobile events in American history. Started by none other than our Mr. Vanderbilt, Long Island was host to the Vanderbilt Cup, America's first international road race. In the six years that it ran, the race attracted thousands of visitors from all over the world and inspired a fascination with race cars in the minds of the American people. Among his many passions, William K. Vanderbilt II was a well-known automobile enthusiast. He had a love for cars as early as 1899, and even drove a Stanley Steamer car in Newport's first automobile parade. In 1900, he purchased his first race car for $10,000, or roughly $332,000 today. Vanderbilt traveled throughout America and Europe with newer, faster cars and joined many important racing events, such as the infamous Paris-Madrid race of 1903. In 1904, Vanderbilt joined the Ormond Daytona automobile tournament. With his new 90 horsepower Mercedes, he broke the land speed record at 92.3 miles per hour. What had become clear to Mr. Vanderbilt at this time was that, on the racetrack, American cars were overwhelmingly lagging behind their European counterparts. In an interview with the New York Times later in his life, Vanderbilt remarked that before the races, the European cars always seemed to be five years ahead of the American cars. Taking inspiration from the grand races he experienced in Europe, Vanderbilt had the vision to create an event in the United States that would challenge American car manufacturers to compete and improve their vehicles. With this goal in mind, the Vanderbilt Cup was born. The Cup took a bit of work to get off the ground. Race officials needed permission to use the public roads, and while many of Long Island's citizens were in favor of the race and the money it could bring, there was backlash from the local farming community who needed the roads for transportation. Vanderbilt, to his part, made sure that the race was properly promoted not only on Long Island, but internationally as well. As an additional incentive to the racers, Vanderbilt commissioned the creation of a 30-pound silver trophy for the event. Designed by Tiffany & Co., the cup featured an embossed image of Vanderbilt aboard his 90-horsepower Mercedes at the Ormond Daytona race. By the fall of 1904, all of the paperwork had been signed and the prize was listed, so the races were ready to begin. At 6 a.m. on October 8, 1904, the first ever Vanderbilt Cup race began. From the starting line in Westbury, the race's 18 contestants took off and began their first lap of the course. The Cup drew in cutting-edge vehicles from American, French, German, and Italian manufacturers, as well as tens of thousands of spectators who came to marvel at the event. The Vanderbilt Cup course traveled over 30 miles of public roads throughout Nassau County, and proved to be treacherous as the racers encountered steep turns, active rail crossings, and spectator-packed roadways. The course also put considerable strain on the race cars, and by the tenth and final lap of the course, only half of the cars were still running. Finally, after a trip of about 285 miles in 6 hours, 56 minutes, and 45 seconds, the winner of the first Vanderbilt Cup crossed the finish line. British driver George Heath in his French 90 horsepower Panard. Though victory ultimately went to France that year, the American cars performed better than expected. In an interview, Vanderbilt stated, I consider the event a very successful one in every way. The race proved that the automobile is a wonderful piece of mechanism capable of carrying people safely over long distances. Following the massive success of the first race, the Vanderbilt Cup became a staple automotive event on the island for the next few years. Each year drew thousands of visitors onto the island, including many of America's most prominent high society members. The Cup even became the subject of a 1907 Broadway play titled, naturally, The Vanderbilt Cup. 
One issue that became more challenging over time in the races was the safety of the spectators. Because the race was conducted on public roads, there was little protection from the racing vehicles as onlookers crowded around, and in many cases into, the roadways. Each preceding year also saw the number of visitors rise. The 1906 race saw over 200,000 visitors and led to the death of one unfortunate bystander. In 1907, Mr. Vanderbilt began construction of a private toll road which ran from Queens to Lake Ronkonkoma. This new parkway had concrete roads designed for motor vehicles and offered longer stretches of open road. It was also less likely to have issues with spectators flooding the course, and for that reason the 1908 race was partly held on Mr. Vanderbilt's parkway. The next two races would use larger parts of the Vanderbilt parkway as more of the road was constructed. Despite the measures taken by Vanderbilt, the Vanderbilt Cup had outgrown Long Island. With crowds of almost 300,000 people surging into Nassau and Suffolk County, crowd control became unmanageable and the roadways proved insufficient. As a result, the 1911 race was moved off of the island and down to Savannah, Georgia. For the next few years, the Vanderbilt Cup would be held in Georgia, Wisconsin, and California until 1917 when the United States entered into World War I. Though there would be two revivals of the Cup in 1936 and 1960, the Vanderbilt Cup's time had ultimately come to an end. Though it's over a hundred years gone, no one can deny the impact that the Vanderbilt Cup had on American automobile history. During its time on the island, the Cup became a massive sports sensation to the public and pushed American car manufacturers to produce better cars. You may not be able to see the races today, but you can still find traces of its history around Long Island, and of course, you can learn more about it here at the Vanderbilt Museum.